Today, I challenged my own viewers to complete a simple race through GTA 5. But this is no simple race because you must also use a mod that I built that will blow up your car if you touch literally anything. That alone would be very hard, but I also made it so that all nearby cars are violently boosted forwards or backwards randomly every 10 seconds. And the challenge is to hit five different checkpoints as fast as possible. The Del Piero sign, the Vespucci bridge, the Mays Bank building, the police headquarters, and the golf course, all while dodging in insane boosted cars and touching literally nothing. For some context, this took me literally nine hours to beat. <laughs> and so I created two different categories for this challenge, one for the overall fastest time and one for the most stylish run. And I gave my viewers 10 days to beat this. These are the very best runs that I received, starting with Captain Roach's extremely fast snow run for style. Now, what I want you to kind of look at here is the standard for these runs going forward, right? There are many runs that are slower than this and will get faster as well, but this is a sort of baseline run. Again, five checkpoints, so he starts at the pier, and now his second checkpoint, he's going for the Vespucci Bridge. So this middle bridge right here, this is checkpoint number two. After Vespucci, you turn left, you head towards downtown. In this case, he's using a jet car. I don't know if I'll actually be able to get some boosts off. Boosts are allowed, by the way. It's just extremely high risk, high reward, because you're going super fast with less control, right? We're coming up on the third checkpoint here, three out of five. This is the Maze Bank building. He has to pull into its driveway, so that's here. Oh, crossing the highway. He's moving towards the police headquarters right now. Nice dodge there. Gets the boost in. Does he go through the mall or around the mall? The mall is dangerous. Okay, goes through the mall. This is the most direct route to the library. Wow, gets lucky with the boost there. If those had gone forward, I think he was porked. Now, right up here, this is the library police headquarters. Has to cross underneath this bridge. This is checkpoint number four. So once he crosses the toll booth of the golf course, that's the fifth checkpoint and he's done. So that's coming up right here. Here's the entrance to the golf course and time right there. Amazing run right there. This is hours and hours and hours of attempts just to hit this run. This is a one minute, 53 second time. But over the first couple of days, we're kind of seeing this as the baseline. All right, you see either a Formula One car or a jet car, and they're getting like a right around sub two minutes for people who are like really grinding this. About a day later, RGB Cake comes in. He switches to an open wheeled car. Instead of using the boost, he uses the Formula One style machine. And this is generally better handling and a little bit faster. You just don't have that high risk, high reward boost craziness going on, right? Now you're gonna see right there, it seems that if just your tire is hit, then that generally doesn't cause your car to be damaged according to the game. So you have like a little bit of these, I guess like shields on the corners of your car, but if you hit something too hard, you're just gonna get screwed anyways. You'll still blow up. So this run is a 141. This saves 12 seconds off Roach's run that we just watched. That was the Maze Bank, that was his third one. Taps right there. Again, it's up to the game to decide does this count as a damaged vehicle or was it just a little like a little kiss between two love bugs? Starts heading towards golf course. At this point, it's just a straight line to the end of the course and that'll be his fifth checkpoint. And time, 142. Now at this point, most of the runs that I was getting were actually open wheel. And this is the first couple days of the challenge, right? This is early on. This was a 141 and it quickly became clear that you have to use car boosts in order to actually beat these times. And so next up, Fargem submitted this time. Remember Fargem's name, okay? If you remember with Roach's first run, he only used the boosts when it was like fairly safe. You'll start to see it used a little bit more here. Like this is a slightly dangerous spot to use a car boost. At this point, you, you also just kind of have to believe. You just have to like full send it and hope nothing gets in your way, right? Like this, this is an insane spot to boost, but gets through it anyways. Another different thing here is that Fargem started downtown. The, the two spots that we've seen start so far are the pier. That was a very popular one. Oh my God, dodges the car right there. Very close. Hits it with the boost into the intersection, has two seconds, dodges the boost just barely. Turns right here. And then again, once you hit the second bump, the second bridge right here, that's time. Like he incorporated enough boosting that you basically have to use boost to possibly beat him, which makes it way harder. So his one minute, 25 seconds holds for a long time until Saboteur comes in. So Saboteur switches to the Toreador, which has, I guess, better boosting. I don't exactly know what it does that's different from the previous car boosts that were being used. 
But you're gonna see that Toreador quickly becomes meta. I think the handling seems like a little, look at that dodge. Look at that dodge. Reminder, we were at a 125 before this, which held for like a few days. He's gonna do all of this crazy shit to knock off two seconds. This checkpoint right here, this pay, this peer sign, this proves really challenging. This is the point of the runs where people start going through that little gap around the side of the sign instead of like flipping around underneath it. Again, once he hits the second little bridge, the time ends right now. But of course, Far Gem fires right back. <clears throat> You're starting to see the same sort of patterns here. Using the Toreador, starting from the downtown bank building and heading this direction, basically down the road and then heading right towards the police building and working an ending at the Vespucci canals. Far Gem's 125 took like days for somebody to finally knock down. Saboteur beat it by two seconds. This is the first run that is sub one minute, 20 seconds. This is a one minute, 16 second time. This is outrageous. Notice how he's hitting boosts while still turning and then incorporating the boost through intersections and past people. It's wild. There's no more reservation about like, oh, I'm gonna wait for a safe spot to use boosts. Just look at these turns. I love the turns. They're so aggressive. Coming up on checkpoint four, this is the pier. How does he deal with it? So again, going around this thing, Turns corner right, and he's at the Vespucci Canals. Again, just has to hit that second bridge. And now we're just hitting the bridge mid, like mid-air, mid-boost, and connects it at the end. Now, this is the point in the competition where I realized that I fucked up the rules. It turns out that your graphics settings in the game affect how hard the challenge is because you can set like how many cars are on the road and because your FPS for some reason changes how far the cars get boosted. So at this point, I split the competition into two categories. Hard mode is the main challenge we're watching where you set the graphics to the hardest settings with the max cars and boosting. So it's insanely difficult. And then easy mode is any other settings. So let's continue watching the hard mode runs. Now I'm starting to see times like a 139 by P1GN or a 143 by the Bobinator 531 or this 149 by Papita who said apologies for the singing I am going through divorce. She had plans to change her name. Just and you can not really the feel for him here. Way. Hunted by a couple You can feel mistakes. the emotion. Oh fuck. Can I skip to the end or do you want to hear the whole song? With the bells and the whistle scaled back like an isolated Doug, shut up, I'm Bell's listening to the song. Alright, fine. Felicitated most days of the week. <coughs> <coughs> Fuck! And then, we get this run. From Coconut7272. This run is a 116 on hard mode. As a reminder, 116 is the record for easy mode by Fargem. This is the same thing, but with more cars and more shit happening. It's basically just full sending it on every single intersection. I can't even imagine how many attempts this took to like have shit like that just barely work out in his favor on top of just driving like pretty much perfect. Hits golf course, this is checkpoint number three. Bumps the, the hedge, the hedges don't seem to blow you up. I guess that makes sense because it's a hedge. Boosting through the sidewalk, boosting again at this turn. All right, Ferris wheel pier, this is checkpoint four. How's he do it? Goes around the first post, interesting. And now he's on to the last bridge of Vespucci. Hits his turn, dodges the cars. Over the bridge, and time. Hits the second one. This run is insane. I can't describe to you how insane this is. People are spending seven hours to hit a two minute time. This is a 116. Absurd. This run holds as the lead. That's how good this run is. And there are dozens that came in. Some honorable mention. Nilzox, two minutes, 26. Purple and Ghosts, two minute time. Sealy Boy 98's 145. A Spectacore's 144. Werner XY's 141. Mr. Biglow's 139. Retro Let's Play's 128. Gambot's 128. And 8 Bits 127. Far Gem, who currently had the lead on easy mode, got a 117. He got within one second, but that was the only one who actually got close. There was also a few that were like a few seconds away. Someone got a 119, somebody got a 120, but Coconut manages to hold it. Goes on and on. And so yesterday I'm looking at the, the, the submissions, right? The deadline is coming up. I'm like, I think Coconut actually got the record like midway through the challenge and was able to hold it. But then at 2 p.m., six hours before the deadline, I get a submission. It's also a 116. And then at 5 p.m., I get another submission. It's also a 116. And then at 7.30, 30 minutes before the deadline, 
I get another submission. It's a 116. These are from Unknown Cat, Alpha Braveheart, and Saboteur. All of them are timed as a 1 minute and 16 seconds. These come in right at the deadline. Right then, Coconut has a chance of being dethroned. And they are so close that I had to take all four of them and put them into Adobe Premiere and look at them frame by frame and time them myself. These are the four fastest times of the entire race. At this point, everybody is using the Toreador and using boosts all the time. Like, all the fucking time. These are all on hard mode, so pedestrian density is set to max, and the cars are being boosted pretty goddamn far. There's some nighttime driving, but that doesn't seem to be a big enough difference. Everybody's also figured out the optimal route starting in downtown and moving towards the golf course. They've all hit checkpoint number two, moving towards checkpoint three, the golf course. You can see Unknown Cat, Alpha Braveheart are very slightly ahead by this point, but they're pretty much all hitting the flower bed at the same time. Everybody getting some ridiculous dodges, going over sidewalk. There are slight optimizations here. It looks like Unknown Cat and Alpha Braveheart, Braveheart are basically neck and neck. Maybe Alpha Braveheart is like two feet in front. Okay, they're hitting the pier here. This is this is the sign. This is a huge part. They have to be extremely careful. Get around the sand. It looks like Unknown Cat now got a slight lead at that point because of the pier sign. Dodges just barely at the top left. And now they turn onto the final road. All they have to do is hit the second bridge. When all four wheels cross the second bridge, they win. Alpha Braveheart goes through five cars. Unknown Cat is just ahead and hits the finish line now. Unknown Cat wins with a 115.27. 60 milliseconds behind Alpha Braveheart, which is only, what, 700 milliseconds behind Coconut? and less than a second behind Saboteur. These all came in at the very end. Unknown Cat at 2 p.m. was in third place and managed to get the record at, and submitted it at 7.30 p.m. So I'm assuming that from 2 p.m. until 7.30, just for another five and a half hours, was grinding this and managed to shave off Alpha Braveheart's time by, here, let me show you in Premiere. This is Saboteur. And this is, this is insanely fast. This would have been just behind Coconuts all week, right? So this is Coconut's run right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 27 frames between Sabbath, uh, between Coconut and Unknown Cat. And so this is Unknown Cat's time at 2 p.m. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 frames behind Alpha Braveheart. Alpha Braveheart had the record up until 30 minutes before the competition. And then Unknown Cat managed to shave off one, two, three, four frames. That's how close it was. And that is how Unknown Cat won the hard mode challenge category. Now let's jump back over to the easy mode category. When the split in the two different difficulties happened, Far Gem had the lead with a 116. And for several straight days, nobody was coming even close to that time. Again, a 116 is absolutely absurd. And it turned out the only person who could beat Far Gem was Far Gem. He submitted this a couple days later. This is a 113. Two seconds faster than that hard mode run, which is basically perfectly optimized. So somehow Far Gem managed to shave two seconds off of his own basically perfect run in easy mode. I don't, I couldn't even tell you where the two seconds came from. Like this feels like just as optimized as the previous one, but clearly there's like just enough minor cutting of turns, minor optimizations. Maybe he was able to get in more reps because there's less cars to deal with and just manages to shave off that tiny amount of time. Like that was a sharper turn right there than the hard mode ones, I believe. And this is the final turn, goes for second bridge and nails it right there. Literally seemed unbeatable. I, I don't know how you possibly top this, right? It was two seconds faster than hard mode. Jory011 came within six seconds. He got a 119, which is, again, insane, right? Unknown Cat, who won hard mode, right, came within four seconds. He got a 117. And as I was watching the minutes tick by last night, I thought, well, easy mode is a little bit anticlimactic. Far Gem just won it, like, early on. Just took it. Nobody even got close. And then at 7.58, two minutes before the 8 p.m. deadline, I received a run from Saboteur. It was a 113. It looked exactly like Far Gem's 113. And so I pulled it into Premiere. These are the two fastest times for easy mode.
Again, same general route, but with enough extremely minor optimizations to shave off two seconds from a hard, ro hard mode run, which is already basically perfect. Farjam has held this for like a week now. Saboteur submitted with two minutes. Basically completely neck and neck. I don't see any noticeable difference right now. Slight difference in route there. One went for sidewalk so he could hit a sharper turn here. Farjam stayed a little bit wider on the roads. They're both coming up on checkpoint number four. This is the pier sign. Saboteur enters the first part, but Farjam the second. And then as they get to the end, Saboteur jumps over the cars. Farjam doesn't deal with it. They both turn. It looks like Farjam has maybe a slight lead. Hits the boost like three frames before Saboteur does. And they fly into the end. Once four wheels are over the bridge, that's time. And Farjam takes it by 280 milliseconds. He did defend his time and he did beat easy mode. Farjam took it. Basically just fucking annihilated easy mode the whole week. Saboteur almost took it from him, but was so goddamn close. This is Farjam's time and that's Saboteur's. Unreal. So congratulations to the winners. That was a hell of a, a run. My God. Oof. My God. Easy ended up being also way more fucking competitive than I expected. So sick, dude. But of course, we're not done. There are a lot more runs because we have the style runs. I will show all of the submissions first, and then you will make the decision who was the most stylish run in the first Doug Doug Community Challenge. This is a 2 minute 45 run by Ranchi, and see if you can notice what's different about it. He played the entire fucking challenge in VR and got a 2 minute 45 time. <laughs> He's going at fucking breakneck speed too. It's not like he took it easy. This was so much harder than the base run, partially because it made me queasy, partially because you can't see your entire car. This is a fucking mess. How many hours do you think he was in this? Rianchi, are you here? How long did you live in VR? He's driving like a fucking lunatic and is alive somehow. 40 hours! <laughs> 40 hours! Go outside! Read a book! Um, this seems excruciating, and I would not wish it on my worst enemy. This next one, it's a little bit emotional, so you might want to grab a tissue. Doug Doug's insurance fraud simulator while drunk. Sorry about the audio, I was divorcing my wife. I spent it. It's gone. Just get over it! What do you mean? What do you mean it's gone? How can you have spent our savings? <laughs> He's self-destructive and disturbed, just like his father. Look at who he has to look up to. Oh, no, 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 Shut no, up. not like this. Just keep pushing me like this. I'm leaving. Good, leave. <laughs> we'll be fine without you. <laughs> what a strange mix of emotions. <laughs> You need to confess your sins and become saved. Let his life be so sad. Let his soul. Hello? Hello? Oh, hey, hey, hey. How's it going, man? So the budget, it's, uh... Honestly, I feel like it's not looking too great. I feel like uh, there might be some distrust within the co company. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I don't know how we're going to pull this off. I don't know whose idea it was. This man but, does but a full 10-minute yeah, yeah. I mean, business call and, I mean, while driving through the city. Pocket. Hey, Jim, are you bre you're breaking up a little bit. Jim, <laughs> hello? <laughs> this is... I believe the slowest yeah. run that I got what was that? because he stopped at every fucking yeah, traffic. Over there. Yeah, traffic's pretty bad. Traffic <laughs> is pretty <laughs> bad out here. Whoa! I almost got hit just now. I almost, almost, got, I almost got hit. Said, Jesus. Oh my god. God needs to watch where he's going. Uh, what? No, trying I'm to do here. business here. here. What are you doing? Here. Okay, I mean, okay. So. Watch this. I'm watch this. So fast. <laughs> oh god, I mean. God. Seems innocent enough. But if you rewind the footage here, look at this, you look at this. I mean, I'm open, though. What do you think? Like He's discussing I'm business. So Seize the yield sign here, but stop written on the ground. 
<laughs> oh, blows God. right past the stop gotta sign. Get that cheddar, you know what I'm saying, Jim? <laughs> but he's trying to get cheddar. Uh, he's trying to balance uh, getting uh, to his I'm business looking, meeting as fast oh, as possible. Oh, my God, but also, why was there a yield sign accident. when there was a stop? I don't understand. Ooh, Let's I go to the last minute. Crazy. Where'd you go? Uh, I, I did. I slept with your wife. Incredible. And Hunter went on to earn 25 million in revenue that quarter. Next up is Fur. Fur is an awesome Mario Odyssey speedrunner and YouTuber. You should check him out if you have not. I don't play GTA 5 really, but that's that's how I'm going to catch the other competitors off guard. Really, that's like, not good logic. Them, you know, I also spend a lot of time looking in the mirror and proving <laughs> myself I'm going to play the best goddamn GTA 5 of my life. <laughs> well, that uh, makes sense. All that build up. <laughs> for her to fucking use a limo, the longest car, and actually completes a run. I forget what the time is at the end. You can do that? Oh, that's smart. Wait, is he just going through the park? So much easier. Wow, so it does, okay, this is actually, the routing is really different on this. Let's get the last minute of the run. It's right there, just go, just go, just go, please, please. Yes, I did it. It has been done. Incredible run, incredible run. The one and only limousine run. Submitted to the community challenge. <clears throat> the mythical dump truck. Off talked about. Multiple other people mentioned dump truck and said, I didn't do dump truck because it's too hard. And I got this run from Sisroot. No, just kidding. Dump truck is fucking impossible. Thurlow decided that a dump truck was too hard, so switched to a bus. And yes, he did actually beat this with a bus. Let's take a look. Every intersection. You are like blocking the whole thing. Any car that appears over the intersection or boost is going to hit you. And then your turn, is, your turn radius is so slow. So right here, he's probably gonna wait, right? So he waits for the boost and then goes. But look at how much time he has left once he finishes the turn. This is a, a psychopathic thing to do. Three minute 55. Like that's a fast time for a bus. Every vehicle has different problems that it has to deal with. Bus is certainly one of the most absurd. Um, and then somebody did actually do it with a dump truck. This is a 10 minute run by Cisroot, who successfully drove a dump truck around all of GTA 5 without touching anything. Dude, every turn is brutal. This is insane. Like that, he had to get lucky. How many times do you think this took? <laughs> every stoplight almost clips him. Even the bridge, <laughs> he's like almost hitting the top of the bridge. For every time that he did this and didn't get hit, there's got to be like a hundred that he did. Backs up, lets this car turn, the boost happens, doesn't connect with him. One comes from behind, but only hits his wheels. The car's stuck, moves backwards, gives him a gap. Does he go for the gap? Doesn't go for the gap. Waits. There's only four seconds till next boost. Should be safe here. It boosts backward again. He has to wait again. Okay, moves forward and gets over the hump to the fifth checkpoint. And is the one and only dump truck run of the GTA 5 challenge. And I know what you're thinking. He finally went to sleep and rested, knowing that he had done his work. He instead submitted another run, where he drives a hang glider <laughs> through the entire city without leaving the ground. And now, finally, with his dump truck work done, he can head off into the sunset, a champion. Godspeed, dump truck man. Next up is backwards from low point. Now, let me preface this a little bit. If you drive backwards, your controls are flipped. Your car's gonna move slower. Your handling's worse. And he's playing this on hard mode. This run is five fucking minutes. Five straight minutes of this. I, ho I hope it's clear that I'm not like playing this up for content. Every one of these runs is like potentially dozens of hours. I was going to go forwards afterwards, but I immediately exploded. <laughs> Next run is by the Honorable Priceful. Now you're gonna notice something a little silly about his car. You might think, is that what's so stylish here? That's part of it. However, you're then gonna notice that the camera is in a weird spot and that the camera changes to a different weird spot. <laughs> Priceful beat the whole thing using cinematic camera mode where every couple of seconds the camera will switch to a new location which could be fucking anywhere and you have no real idea of what's happening around you. This guy drove through the whole downtown with the cars boosting everywhere in cinematic mode while honking. Sometimes when I close my eyes, I can still hear Priceful honking out there somewhere in GTA 5. 
Hits it with a four minute, 21 second time. Next up by Flynn the Redhead. It started with him trying with a normal vehicle for quite a while and having some issues as you can see. He failed over and over and over. And finally he had an epiphany. But then I remembered what Ryan Lockwood taught us. That's fucking right. I skipped 113. I'm a fucking legend. 112, baby. To the day I fucking Proceeds to do a full yes! go-kart run. One of two go-kart finishers. Very impressive. Not really good at this challenge. Right here, Slightly more survivable. My insane pace. Right here. This is the 112. Right here. Yes! Now, I, I am sorry to inform everybody that he did not get a 112. But, 317 go-kart victory. That's big. That's a big play right there. In order to be the most stylish, I had to become Guy Fieri. So swaps his model. And heads back out. I don't remember if he beat it. <laughs> no, no, he didn't. <laughs> So then switches to driving backwards. Does I don't remember who beats this. But now you're going forward. Okay. <laughs> New plan. Cinematic mode. So he might not be beating these. But he certainly is doing stylish things. I don't remember how long this goes on for. That's how long. Okay. <laughs> Do you beat any of these? <laughs> Okay, all right. Yeah, let's add more into the mix. Cinematic mode uh, and airplanes. <laughs> what do you do in this situation? There's no way. Okay, yeah. Cinematic backwards planes. <laughs> no fucking way. <laughs> I think you did a little better than some of the others. That was a good attempt. Good attempt. Are you done? Well, hold on. You're supposed to be driving in the city. This is a challenge. Challenge doesn't count. Guy Fury can't just lead, he can't just bail. Enjoying a life without this stupidly difficult challenge. Well, Guy Fury would have beaten it backwards and cinematic camera runs and planes, dude. Guy would have done it. No, don't. After Flynn the Redhead's excellent uh, submission, I received this video. Hey, Doug Doug. Uh, I heard that you were uh, accepting GTA 5 speedruns. I, uh, I don't own GTA 5. My, uh, my wife took the game when she, uh, when she left me. <laughs> GTA 5, so, Doug Doug speedruns. one of the rules world. is very gonna, much you uh, have I'm to play the right game. I, could, uh, I just want to be clear here, because there seemed to be I some confusion on some of the submissions. Really, really fast across the village. The Maybe challenge was not like just that. go fast in I a video gotta, game. I said something up real quick. I there's, know it doesn't follow the You have to. Rules. There's oh, specific rules. Anyway, let's All right, uh, chat. Consider let's go. how stylish this is in relation to breaking literally every single rule. <laughs> and you got to admit, dodging all the cars at this point, doing a pretty good job. Oh Next up, I got this run. This is a. Eight and a half hour Hollow Knight speed run. And you know what? At first I thought, well, this breaks all of the rules and every single facet of what this challenge is supposed to be. But like, maybe it's at least a good speed run. So I checked the leaderboards. Guy Tush's run <clears throat> is last place. Jumpy Luff is the submission. Eight and a half hours is five hours slower than the world record. Why did you send me this? 
This is not fast and it's not the right game and it didn't follow any rules anyways. So maybe chat will vote for it for most stylish. It was kind of cool. These wonderful submissions continued. I got 25 people who just sent me a Rick roll. Uh, one guy just sent me a Pornhub link, like just straight up Pornhub, didn't try to hide it. And at this point, like, I feel like, okay, we've pretty much seen everything, right? Like these are some ridiculous, ridiculous runs. Some of them not even in GTA 5. And then I got this run. So at first I was a little bit confused about the camera angle of this, right? This man beat my hard-ass GTA 5 challenge on hard mode with one hand while solving a fucking Rubik's Cube. He completes the Rubik's Cube during this run while beating the challenge. This is fucking insane. This is from Unknown Cat, who won the hard mode. This is the fastest runner of the whole challenge and can apparently do this too. And it's not like he's driving in the open street either. He's like navigating on the sidewalks, right? He's not taking an easy route. And then does a second one after finishing the first. Like playing with one hand alone. That should be, that should be qualifications for like one of the most stylish. How do you get, oh, you can go through the hedges there. Two Rubik's cubes done. In the first three quarters of the run, played one handed, solve two Rubik's Cubes. And from here, he just closes it out. Remember, this unknown cat is the same guy who, who beat the hard mode in the last 30 minutes of the challenge. He, he was one of the top runners, then did this, and then was like, you know what? I'm gonna also go be the fastest person in the whole competition. Oh, oh, oh fucking hell. What a fucking run, unknown cat, my God. And finally, one last run. Hello. A painter. Decides that he will try to make art <laughs> with one hand <laughs> while while playing my challenge in the other. Let's go. Now, most of the runs, we don't really have a great sense of how much time passed while they were practicing this. You get a little bit better sense of this guy because we can see all of the paintings that he completed <laughs> while practicing. This is awesome. Look at Acre and Zekru over here. Look at Rosa. This is so sick. And some more. Look at what he accomplished. <laughs> this is like beautiful artwork. I couldn't do this. How much time? My paintings started to look really good. And after eight hours and a lot of luck, <laughs> this happened. Is it because it's super easy to draw? At least with at least with him, like at the end of this, he's got Thank several you. beautiful paintings to look back on. So then he proceeds to show the actual run, and this is pretty standard, right? It's slow. We're talking a five-minute run, but paints through a landscape the entire time. Oh fucking go! And Let's then right here, go. victory! At last, I managed it. to do it. Look at that! Look at that! That's amazing! So cool! And that's our final submission. I think I speak for everyone when I say, God damn, what an amazing set of style runs. Holy shit, you guys are so talented and crazy. It's wild. Even if you are last place on the Hollow Knight leaderboard. And with that final submission, we now had Twitch chat vote on who is the most stylish run. And I'm honored to say that out of the many incredible submissions in this contest, the winner of the most stylish run is Painting While Driving. Followed closely by the Rubik's Cube run, followed closely by the olive oil truck, followed narrowly by the guy who just sent me porn. Congratulations, porn.